so... Hi, welcome to an interview with Bob Brown, author of the new book, Panic Attack Prevention. Bob is U.S. Army retired and has a, a vast amount of other experience. But tell us a little bit about yourself, Bob. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Well, my, uh, my history is I went from high school right into the Army and uh, Vietnam and uh, spent two tours there. Uh, went to uh, uh, Germany, was posted there for a number of years, uh, retired and had several businesses and came to the U.S. about 10 years ago. And during that interim uh, uh, Vietnam experience, somewhere around the first and second tour, I developed uh, what is known as an anxiety uh, attack. You had your first anxiety attack? Right. And uh, this, there's a difference between an anxiety attack and panic attack. Panic attack is by far the worst of the two. And uh, Maybe we'll get into that a little later. Right, right, okay. And so I understand that we have a clip that'll give us a little intro to what yeah. you and I are gonna right. dive into. Okay. Thank you. So you wanna know why I have panic attacks and why I just can't snap out of it. Let me tell you why I can't just snap out of it. Panic attacks happen when your body shifts into an ancient and somewhat entertaining state known as the fight or flight response. It's actually a good reaction to have if, for example, a bear is chasing you and it's the year 1000 BCE for the Jews and you live in the woods and have only a wooden spear to protect yourself. Your heart starts beating very fast and blood flow is diverted from your extremities to your heart and upper respiratory system so you can breathe more quickly and your legs get tense and you start to get nauseous because your digestive system goes out of whack. Your body's gonna waste time digesting your food. There's a frigging bear after you. Run! And your pupils actually dilate a little bit to let in more light in case you have to run through light and dark in the woods where you live and you feel terrified. It's like the exact opposite of an orgasm. Does it sound like I can snap the f out of that? It's actually a useful reaction to have if there really is a bear after you. But it's not so useful when, say, you're standing in the Whole Foods, in the cheesemonger section, trying to decide whether you should pay $25 for an ounce of gently coddled, lovingly stroked, all free range, all the time feta, or pay $1,000 for a crumb of Gouda that's been spoken to delicately by elves in sweet, sweet whispers underneath the starry night. I mean, you should probably feel bad about yourself for even being in that situation, but that's just because you shouldn't be at Whole Foods. You should be shopping somewhere f***ing normal. Anyway, that's what panic attacks are. And I wrote a book about them. Well, that was some interesting information. Uh, but maybe in your own words, too, you could talk to us about what is a panic attack. Well, there's a difference between a, an anxiety attack and a panic attack. The anxiety attack is a uh, uh, fast buildup uh, to a, uh, an event that makes you feel out of control and your stomach is you know, full of the butterflies and your, you know, your skin tingles, that kind of thing. Uh, but basically, it's a, it's a short-term event. It's uh, disturbing, very disturbing. But uh, uh, the panic attack is an anticipation of an anxiety attack, and it's a much worse condition. It's very much a debilitating situation where if you're driving, you have a panic attack, you're endangering others as well as yourself. See? Uh, and the symptoms would be a, uh, a massively increased heartbeat, uh, very tight breathing, uh, feeling like you're uh, going to have a heart attack or you're in a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, you uh, different ways of handling this, but oftentimes a person will fall to the ground and be out of just out of touch with reality. 
so that's that's the difference it sounds strange that you'd be having a worse condition anticipating a lesser the panic attack actually builds to the anxiety attack but the anxiety attack has the symptoms affect you to a lesser degree yes but the pan of the panic attack is an anticipation of the anxiety attack I know so, it sounds goofy, but so no. Talk about the anxiety attack then, and does does one always follow on the no, other? No, 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 oh, no, okay. no. It's just the fear of going into an anxiety attack. And then when and then the anxiety attack does that come? So they don't follow one on the other. No, an can you have an anxiety attack? Right. Can you have an anxiety attack without first panicking? No, 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 not at all. Usually, uh, you uh, you will find the people will have a panic attack more than they ever have an anxiety attack. It's the oh, first few anxiety yeah. attacks that really disturb them. And then they get this fear built in on them. They're educating themselves to feel totally out of control. And uh, gotcha. then they get this massive response to the fear of an anxiety attack. So what is an anxiety attack then? That's well, just an overreaction to a stressful situation. And there's a difference between stress and distress. Distress is feeling like there's no alternative ahead of you that's good, and it's massively bad, and you're going to have a terrible outcome. <laughs> so, Exams week, yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so uh, panic attacks and anxiety attacks are, are something that are both a part of your life now? Uh, the panic attack in particular. The anxiety attack, much less so. And, and do, would you say that... that this function of your life uh, arose from your experience while you were in the military? Well, sure. I was in combat uh, for two tours. You know, that's, that's a big deal. Right. Uh, most right. Uh, people went for one tour. And I was uh, significantly damaged <laughs> in a uh, non Vietnam uh, event, which the U.S. government doesn't recognize. I uh, uh, had a uh, uh, experience uh, washing down with Agent Orange while I was on the ground. And then while I was in a helicopter, uh, uh, there was a uh, malfunction in a helicopter uh, gyro and went down hard. Uh, everybody lost their life except me, and uh, I ended up uh, evac'd, you know, fairly quickly. But I had no jaw, all my teeth were gone, and uh, I had massive chest problems, broken legs, and uh, so it took me a long time to recover. So that. Potentially, the Agent Orange gave me some problems, but I think it was mainly the incident with the helicopter down. Sure, sure. So you had significant physical issues to overcome, and, and then piled on top of that came the emotional and the psych well, psychological got, yeah, the more repercussions of yeah. Yeah, but what was going on. Don't, I mean, uh, uh, you don't get the anxiety attack or the panic attack uh, through um, uh, military experience. This is happening, you know, with the Iraq and the Afghanistan uh, uh, wars. Right, but, right. But you don't need the military experience to have these anxiety attacks and panic attacks. Anybody can get them. Right, right. And sometimes only once or twice a, a right, lifetime. Right, So how, how much of a change has there been now? Well, like, what was your life like before? And what kind of effects can you see the difference between your life before you were stricken by these attacks and now? Well, uh, it was a good life before, and uh, it complicated my life after. Uh, and of course, I had an alcoholic life to cope with this thing. Uh, I would well, and the Agent Orange did nerve damage, right? So. Well, well, I can't prove that, but that's in there. Yeah. And the alcoholism had no, had no good effect. No. You see. Uh, no, it felt like self-medication, but it was ineffective. Right. Yeah. Right. At the moment, it felt great. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, then, it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> when the so, light bulb goes on. Right. But, yeah. Right. So uh, coping is the problem. Uh, and how do you cope uh, effectively without meds and medic medications uh, right. applied? Right. Usually, those have terrible side effects anyway. So I went yeah. through a, a uh, period where I had to rebuild myself with the, uh, the um, denial of alcohol and, uh, and a way of coping with the negativity that's associated with 
rebuilding yourself uh, and uh, making, remaking your world, your outlook. Right. And right. Uh, I went through a lot of therapy, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. psychiatry and uh, uh, psych psychotherapeutic uh, action. And the, uh, what I came up with is a method of handling this without medications and without therapy. It's a self-therapy uh, solution. Well, obviously, though, you feel as if it's effective. Right. And that's what we're here today to talk about is right. this, this system that you've dev devised for coping that doesn't include medication right. or very little medication and then does n also no longer include therapy right yeah, yeah. and so uh, and that's the obviously the theme of your book right and so exactly. yeah so maybe you could tell us a little bit about that <coughs> well in a, in essence it's a, a coping with uh, negativity in all forms uh, it's similar in, in some respects to the therapy you find uh, through the 12 steps of uh, uh, the Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, but it's a very personal uh, review internally of who you are and why you do the things you do and those things that you're, you do better and will continue to, to do better because you see a different object in front of you for your goals. So it's goal building and, and uh, mm -hmm. making steps on your own. So, so obviously, someone who picks up the book is going to get a much more in-depth look at. Right. But on the surface now, um, how is your book uh, distinguishable from other books on those shelves in the self-help section? Right. It's simple. It's simple to do. Yeah. And uh, it's. Uh, it's similar in some respects to the steps of an alcohol, Alcoholics Anonymous, but there's 10 steps, not 12. Mm -hmm. Not that there's any big skip in there, but there's a melding of some of those rules and some of those uh, mm -hmm. uh, applications they've got. Uh, and uh, the method is you can remember quickly. There's an identification with a specific color, for instance, a, uh, a particular image, you know, mental picture image. Right, uh, right. Uh, particular numbers. So they're both um, practical, you know, the <laughs> real world with a color, and uh, even though you see the number, uh, the symbol for the number, internally it's a different way of, of handling uh, your mental processes. So those are centering ways for your uh, ego to, uh, right. to stabilize. Right, right. Sounds like one of your objectives with this program was to make it user friendly. Well, it was user-friendly for me, so I guess it's user-friendly <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> how long do you think it took you to develop this? How, how long oh, were it's you? Oh, yeah, uh, I'd say at least a couple of years. Now, this I didn't have any clues to what I was doing. I was just coping. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but after dealing with psychiatrists and, and therapists, uh, I came up with these basic rules, and, and I could identify the Alcoholics Anonymous, although I didn't find that program personally helpful. Uh, right. I could identify with what they were accomplishing, and it just clicked. So, uh, so, and then I described this to the psychiatrist and told them I've I've handled this. I haven't taken my meds for three months, and of course they questioned that. They were a little <laughs> bit horrified and right. concerned, and right. yeah. And so, was it actually getting off the medication that was your initial motivation? I think so. I think so. And was that because you were worried about the side effects? Or side effects and dependency. The long term, yeah. on it, on it, right. on it, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. once you go off the meds, the the answer is, well, you're going to go off the, you're going to now turn crazy again, or you're going to now get the panic attacks again. Right. You know. Right. And so this is a system that's in play in your life every single day? Yeah, or but it's, not, a, it's not one of those things you have to yeah. get up and think about, you know. It's internalized. Now, once in a while, you have to go through the exercise. Right, yeah. right, yeah. But you do find that, that it, despite its effectiveness, it's still, well, to borrow a little thing from AA, is it a one day at a time? You wake up in the morning and you're like, today is a good day? Oh, I think that's, it's affirmations that you come to you naturally. Right. I mean, you can see a cloudy day and, and appreciate that's a cloudy day, but it's uh, I'll dress a little warmly and I'll greet people nicely, you know. Right. And you're not right. going to frame your whole day on a cloudy day being negative. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so what prompted you to then turn it into a book? Well, that's it. Uh, I saw a lot of other uh, Iraq veterans and uh, Afghanistan uh, vets and, uh, and people just generally around that needed this kind of uh, answer. And mm -hmm. uh, it isn't given them. You know, it's way too simple. <laughs> Well, yeah, and so people have a fear of things that have been simplified. They feel like right. you're, like you're just scratching the surface. Like you're not really one of those. Yeah, you're fixing the symptoms and not the problem. Mm -hmm. I imagine you got that from your therapist as you discussed the program with but, them. No, uh, several therapists over the over the years uh, that uh, before I finally got this down. Uh, but uh, going back to them and checking back with them, they verified that it's it's a workable solution. So the the what I hope to relate with people through the book is it's it comes from a genuine uh, history of trauma, and the solution is self self made, you know, self discovered. Sure, sure, and do you, and I'm getting from what you're saying is that. That you believe that it's widely applicable. I do. Your initial interest in helping was was people who had a similar experience to yours, right. but it's not restricted to that right. target audience. Right. So there'll be a college version. There'll be a uh, a parent version. Uh -huh. You know, uh, and we'll go through uh, exercises or or uh, how tos to get them through it. Okay. And I'll have a forum so they can come in and visit and talk about these things. All right. All right. And so. Is this something that is already available, or is yet no, to be published? No, it's yet to be published. It'll come out in a PDF form uh, and uh, probably a Kindle book, a short Kindle book, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. a straight uh, Amazon published uh, book there. Is so it so? Uh, so it's um, it's self published or self published through Amazon's uh, self through their yeah Create Space is their self published. Right, yeah. right, okay. And then, then I have a website for them. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, and then, then it's downloadable onto mm -hmm. an e-reader. Right. But what about the members of the panicked world that don't have e-readers? Well, it'll be a PDF form, so they'll be able to download it or buy on online at the Amazon. So it's electronic. Mm -hmm. There's no print version. Of no, it. no, there's print version uh, through Create Space, which is a pub self-published paper published. Oh, version so it's both. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, I misunderstood. Okay. And probably free through the VA eventually if I can make connections there. That's something that you've got in the works. Yeah. Are they being uh, Very receptive? Very Are they? Yep. Are they? That's terrific. How long a read is it? 192 pages huh. with notes uh, and then index. So it's real simple. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, it took you several years to realize that you had developed this program for right. yourself and to and to coalesce it into this product, right. someone who dives in, uh, how's that going to go for them? Or does it matter how committed they are? Well, or both, right? Commitment If you're, you're going to buy the book, you're going to be committed. Or you're going to be concerned about somebody that is, right. you know, that trauma, that right. situation. So I think most people are looking for a solution. And uh, right. it's, uh, it's pretty disturbing part of their life, you know, when they, mm -hmm. they're confronted with, well, college student with uh, exams week and they've not coped well in the past, they want to solve this. They don't want to have a terrific uh, time trying to concentrate on that paper. So you're figuring that people are highly motivated in this yes, arena. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so in that circumstance then, I mean, what can they expect? Can they flip through in two days and whoa? Oh, well, no, there's, uh, okay. There's uh, kind of, it's kind of broken up in two pieces. One is a narrative, and the other is the how-to section. It's not how about, it's how to actually right. apply it. Right. So when it's a devoted to college students, it's talking about this in college terms, practical college terms. But also the how-to is exercises while you are in this college life. Yeah. So. The and they've always got the forum to go to to. Right, 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 and and so so, I'm still trying to get some sort of a time frame out of you for results. I guess. Oh no! Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. for the individual. Yeah. No, it's not. Good. There's yeah. no no nothing specified. No. It could be very short term. Again, some people have this uh, panic attack incidents, uh, maybe once or twice in their life, mm -hmm. and it's looked back on as a. Uh, you know, just a weird moment or a weird event or that, you know, they keep talking about, oh, well, I had this heart attack 
and the doctor can't verify there's a heart attack. Right. But uh, right. and they tell them maybe this sometimes get informed it's a panic attack you're having, but they don't believe it. But it's over with in their lives. You see, it's only happened once or twice. But some people get a heck of a problem out of this. They, they, it's turned into a panic disorder where they get it all the time. <laughs> and are deal. panic attacks generally more frequent than anxiety attacks? They, they can be. They can be. Yeah. I had a friend, uh, have a friend who used to have um, a combination of panic attacks and anxiety attacks. Um, and what she discovered, in addition to uh, the other things that she was given as help, um, that her diet actually made a difference. That makes a big difference. I think that's why we saw the sponsor there with, uh, with that clip from YouTube, is Whole Foods. Not yeah. that I'm endorsing Whole Foods. Thank God. Although we have one here Thank now. Thank God for their we espresso really like and it. Their, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cinnamon stick. <laughs> uh, 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 diet is huge in everything. Uh, yeah, sugar, you know, I'm an example here. Sugar, uh, starch, um, uh, it's, a, it's a both a, an opportunity for mm -hmm. uh, making well your body, but also everything that you depend on <clears throat> to make your brain and your emotions and all that work yeah. uh, is your physical body. Right. And uh, right. you can't disdain your physical body. So a very healthy diet, and I encourage everybody to, to examine what they're eating and go to a Mediterranean diet or something like a, uh, what's the, um, a caveman diet, but it's a not, not a caveman diet. Uh, I don't think I know oh. that one. Oh, yeah, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, God. Who is the guy? I can't the remember not the guy's caveman name. Well, is it all meat? No, or? no, no. Meat's a part of it, but it's also fats. We, we tend to uh, ignore. Oh, meat and fat. Well, that was... And Atkins had a version of meat Right, and but it's a different yeah. from the Ad Atkins diet. Oh, okay. And it doesn't include yeah. grains. Right. M most of the grains are eliminated entirely. Uh, but it's mm -hmm. uh, it's very healthy when you think about what it takes to build the body, the b the brain. We tend to look at uh, fat as being bad in our culture, and and uh, low fat as being great. And low fat, of course, contains a lot of sugar. It's right. the wrong solution. It's got to yeah. be more fat, yeah. less sugar. Well, she didn't have to. In the end, um, she discovered that she didn't have to make huge changes to her diet although she wanted to and it right. was recommended but right off the bat to get the biggest result she cut out caffeine and she cut out sugar right and it just good yeah good. it was a significant difference for her including the fact that suddenly after years of insomnia she could get a decent night's sleep oh it isn't it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and even you know a good eight hours makes you a whole different person yeah when you wake up in the morning yeah so so the, does the book speak to the to the holistic aspect right. of how to care for your body? Yes, yes. Mentions things like stop drinking coffee and soda and any specific advice or any diet, a chapter on here's well, if how you this want it works. In the short, let me give it to you a short, uh, in yeah. a very short way. Avoid all sugars, added sugars. Avoid uh, uh, anything but the minimal fruit. I'm sorry to say the minimal fruit. Uh, has a lot of sugar in it, natural sugar, uh, and uh, avoid all grains. Now that's the most difficult for me because bread is great, you know. <laughs> and Warm, any bread derivative, toasty, oh, butter, yeah, big, it's a killer. big, it is. Yeah. Uh, increase your fats, including the full fat yogurt, uh, etc. Uh, don't trim the fat from the meats. You know, you may not want to necessarily eat it, but you. Let it get in. Let, it, let the juices get in. Right, let it cook that right. way. Yeah. Yeah. So and make it lean after. And try to get as much. I used to poo-poo this a lot. Just I, girlfriends would tell me, "Well, you've got to get into this, uh, you know, this organic food." Well, they're right. They were absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah. Funny about that. Yeah. And yeah. Were, they actually attend and and mild exercise, not something that's. Gym we don't have to be triathletes. Right. You just walk around three or four times a, a week. Try to make it a half hour to begin with. Pump yourself up to a couple of half hours a day or an hour. And that's it. Well, the number that's floating around for walking is 10,000 steps. Hmm. So is that just shy of two miles or a mile and a half, somewhere it's in that window? Right. It seems to be like I the common... Know. 
acknowledged. My last you step probably in, moved in the walk, enough. I'm going to say 10,000. <laughs> Whatever it is at the end of the day, you yeah. were at 10,000. Yeah. Is that the no, plan? No, no, no. Just yeah. do it. Do it enough that you feel good about yourself. Okay. Don't overdo it. Right. Because you want right. to keep this repetitive. And as you avoid the sugar and the starches and you do that little bit of walking, you'll see a heck of a difference. Well, and then the idea is not to overwhelm yourself with the program so that right. you're discouraged right. by it right. and just put the book in a corner and go, oh, I can't pull that off. No, it's off. a simple, right. yeah. simple step, by incremental step by incremental step. Just yeah. walks you through it. Right. Huh? Baby steps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Thank you. <laughs> so what about Bob? Yeah. What else do we need to know? What haven't we covered here. Well, Any last uh, okay. little tidbits? Yeah, yeah. Uh, look for others programs too because there's a lot of them out there recently in the last year dealing with panic attacks. So don't depend on, on mine alone. Uh, uh, look for the solution that works for you. Maybe it's going to take more than one or you know a combination of a couple. Sure. But uh, they're all relatively inexpensive and uh, what you want is a solution. Right. Okay. And can the and and on the off chance that somebody doesn't have an opportunity to download the book or um, their life is busy and they're not reading it as much as they would like to, they have an opportunity to go out to the forum and have a support group available there right. through, through your sure. discussion. Sure, sure. Right? Yeah. 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 Well, I think that's all the time we have, actually, Bob. We're going to call it for today, but it's been great to have you here, and hopefully we've got some people who can benefit from this plan to simplify their life and make it smoother I and happier. So. Yeah. Thank you very much, yeah, Catherine. Thank you. thank you for having me in. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.